good morning welcome back to the channel it's been a while i've been a bit busy with other things uh, but today i thought i'd come out with the camera make a special effort and basically we've got a very overcast and misty summer's day and it's just slightly spotting with rain but i've come down to the local fields and as you can probably see around me if i turn around very slowly that we've got a lot of flowers got poppies we've got all sorts of things I don't I can't even start to name what they are but the objective of today's video is to show you this new lens which is a 500 millimeter secondhand autofocus mirror lens which is a very rare commodity it's a fixed f8 it has an incredibly narrow aperture um, at, sorry at f8 it's fixed it's got a very narrow depth of field at about minimum focus distance which is four meters it's probably only this much depth of field and that is proving to be possibly a challenge so I'm constraining myself to this one lens and my objective today is to get some nice portraits of some flowers um, in their beautiful summer condition so let's see how we get on and uh, it might be a short video I don't know I'm not sure what we're going to find but let's go and have a look and let's uh, come along with me or you guys come along with me and see if I get any images worth keeping Well, as I was saying, this being a, a mirror lens, it's a fixed aperture. And being a fixed aperture at f8, on 500 millimeters, that is a very relatively shallow depth of field. So that's a factor, and because I can't alter that depth of field easily at all, um, that's a factor in what I'm going to have to take shots of. So it is quite a noisy little beast. If I actually, don't know if you can hear that, that's the focusing motor working so I'm not too concerned about it being noisy because I'm not using it for video but uh, it does mean that I've got to be very careful with the focus that I'm going to configure and obviously if I take a shot where the foreground and the background is a big big difference I'm either going to have to focus stack uh, which means probably taking of the order of 10 shots or I'm going to have to accept that the foreground interest is in focus and the background's out of focus. So I'm looking around trying to find a subject. Still haven't found one. Um, I think there's something coming into frame soon which is some distant trees which might make a, a nice hazy background but uh, I've got to find a decent foreground. So let me see what we get. Well, I found my first subject and it's uh, not a very exciting subject, but I think if with a bit of careful framing, it might end up being quite a nice image. And what it is, is it's a tiny piece of, uh, I think it's cow parsley, and it's in front of us here on the track. And if I point it out with my finger, it's just about there, a little white head of cow parsley, and behind it's rye grass growing up. And I'll get closer to show you the sort of shot I'm trying to get. See, it's basically this cow parsley here, as you can see, but it's going to be photographed from the minimum focusing distance of this lens. And the minimum focusing distance is four meters. So I've got it set to manual focus um, via the camera. It's set to manual focus on the camera. And basically I am going to have to, because it is literally about an inch depth of field, I'm going to have to move backwards and forwards at approximately four and a bit meters away to get the shot that I want. So bear with me because I'm holding you and moving backwards and forwards and focus peaking's helping, the little red dots and things, highlights are helping with that a lot. Um, I'll show you what I've taken if the back of the camera is bright enough. Spin you round here that oops that is the shot that i've just taken which is probably too much reflection on the screen to see it's got the single cow parsley coming up and the rye grass out of focus in the background 
I think that's quite a pleasing little image. Uh, it basically fills the basic rules of having the cow parsley on the thirds in the top half and the cow parsley coming in. I can't show you with my finger at the same time, cow parsley coming in from the bottom. So that's the first shot. I'm quite pleased with it. As I say, I'm quite pleased with that shot. Um, it's, it's not going to win any awards. It's just quite a pleasing little country scene image um, with a long lens. Anyway, let's see what else we've got that we can take shots of. Well, <laughs> this, is, this is all proving to be much harder than I thought it would be, mainly because of the shallow depth of field. It literally is only inches at four metres. If it's, if it's an inch and a half to two inch, I'd be surprised. 25 to 30 millimetres. Because some of the pictures I've taken, which I'll put up now, you can see that the front of the image is soft, the back of the image is soft, and the primary image or the primary um, focus point is actually reasonably tack sharp. I'm quite impressed with the lens in terms of its ability, uh, but it certainly brings with it some challenges. Uh, so I haven't really found the shot that I want to take. Um, I've taken a few, which obviously I'm going to show you, but uh, they just demonstrate the shallow depth of field really. Uh, and quite a simple composition of just some flowers in the woods or at least in and around the edge of this field here so I'm still looking for something to make a bit more of a meaningful photograph from and hopefully when I find that I'll be able to talk you through what I'm doing and why I've also hampered myself because coming out with the dogs I've also not brought a tripod and hand holding a 500 millimeter lens is going to be a problem anyway Let's see how we get on. Well, a little lesson in history. Um, basically, Sony bought out Minolta many, many years ago. I don't know the exact date. But in doing so, they bought the A-mount, which became Sony's primary lens mount when they entered the, uh, the camera marketplace back in the day. And pretty much since then, Minolta has sort of obviously gone the way of things. And in doing, what they've done is they've created a whole series of A-mount lenses for their cameras, which also fit Sony cameras, or Sony cameras that have, like this has, an A-mount to E-mount converter on it. And my reasoning was quite simple. I didn't pay very much money. I think it was £200 for this mirror lens. And it basically is new. There's not a mark on it. There's no dust, no, and no evidence it's really ever being used. Now, that is a good thing, because that's cheap, but also, basically, that also means that I can buy any number of Minolta lenses, which are A-mount, to fit on my camera and get the advantage of some probably, almost certainly, very cheap lenses. Good lenses, but very cheap, on the back of the fact that very few people are using A-mount now, and it's a discontinued mount system as I believe it is with Sony. I don't think they're making any more A-mount lenses. So I've now got access to a fair number of lenses that I can put on my camera, and quite specialist lenses, some fixed primes and so on, which won't cost me an arm and a leg. So that's my plan. And I think I'm just coming up on something I might want to take some pictures of, because just behind where you guys are, there's a bunch of poppies in the edge of the field. And I'm a mug for a bunch of poppies at the edge of a field, so let's see if we can get a shot from there. Well, I couldn't vlog that as I was doing it because I was kneeling down in the edge of this rapeseed here, trying to get close to the poppies, obviously limited by the four metre minimum focus distance, so I couldn't really get the effect I wanted. Also massively hindered by the shallow depth of field, which I've already mentioned, and uh, I'm not even sure any of these pictures are going to be worth putting up. Uh, I'm hoping a couple of them, a bit abstract, um, a bit of deliberate motion blur in them uh, might well work, but I don't know. Let's have a look. Let's get home and process them and see what we've got.
very much for watching the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and click the notification icon and the bell and you'll be able to be notified when I upload new videos.